who's back. It's me. It's Katie. I just blocked my microphone. <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know I'm here. <laughs> she arrived. She's back. Her hair is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Her outfit is gorgeous. Thank She's you. gorgeous. So we're happy. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> and she's tired. I forgot. Oh, I'm that. so tired. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, to be okay. First, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. First, I'm okay. gonna introduce the podcast, and then I'll start okay. talking about everything else. Okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I am Katie, and that really is Lily Kay. <laughs> I'm not Katie. I'm really Katie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look, I even wrote, no, really, in my name. <laughs> well, uh, come on. This is how we work. Yeah. Um, so, so, yes, I've been doing many 13 sort of hour days for the past two nice. weeks. Yeah. So I'm tired. You like those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by 13 hour days, I'm, I'm counting from the moment I sort of wake up in the morning to when I get home. Yes. My actual work days are 11 hours. Everything's fine on that front. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm just I'm just tired. I'm physically tired. I'm a bit mentally tired. Uh, and I'm not actually done because I went and said yes to another day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. It's the last one, I promise. I, so, I, 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 said, we, I was like, we have I'm not you doing back, it anymore. so it's good. <laughs> Oh well, uh, at least you have fun. I'm guessing. Yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, oh, there yeah, you go. We were in a we were in a pretty nice location that I can't tell you anything about. Um, doing some pretty cool stuff that I can't tell you anything about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great conversation. <laughs> Look, when it comes out, I'm be sure to talk all about it. Yes, that's you know this is how it works in the film industry. So you know, yep. it's understandable. Yeah, pretty much. It's understandable. Um, so I'm not going to ask you what have you been watching because I'm guessing that you haven't watched too many things. I mean, I did actually watch a couple of things. Because oh. um, uh, for those who don't know, I was meant to do 10 days total. No, nine days um, total on the shoot. And then some things happened, which means the things got moved. And I, meant I, I ended up doing more days. But what it was, was I did five days, and then I got one day off in the middle, and then I was meant to do four days. And on that day off in the middle, which was a Wednesday, I watched two movies. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. And I did tweet about this as well. If you, anybody oh, yes, you did. Anybody attention to yes, our Twitter account, I have been trying to, like, put my, myself in every once in a while, but it seems like nobody really cares. <laughs> Alas. But I watched A Few Good Men, and then I watched The Trial of Sh- the Chicago 7, which were both very good. I watched The Trial of Chicago 7 after you tweeted as well. Oh, did you? I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, shit, I should really watch this now. <laughs> it's good, right? It I, it made me cry, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, it that's was like, I because it was one of those things I heard, I heard, like, the critic response obviously was very positive for it, right? Mm-hmm. But I from people who kind of just sort of watch movies and, like, it, on that kind of sub- I don't know, critic um, yeah. level, the people whose kind of opinions I respect on things, things were kind of like, yes, yeah, it's, it's fine. You know, they, it was very, they were very middling sort of opinions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was going into it expecting it to be sort of like fun, you know, well-written, yeah. as uh, dialogue's probably punchy because it's an Aaron Sorkin movie. But I thought it was excellent. <laughs> like, it was really, I really, really, really liked it. Yeah, uh, I, I, my jaw dropped because I didn't know that he was in it, and I love this man. Mark Rylands was fucking fantastic again. Like, Mark Rylands was um, counselor. Uh, he he was counselor. Yes. The 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 defense attorney. The yeah the the long yeah the long hair yeah 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 he he was the, great, and I would recommend to people if you watch the movie to actually go look up the real trial because yes. the the movie is only like a fraction of how batshit the actual trial was. Like, it really was insane. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I can't remember the name of it. The guy who played the judge did an excellent job because I hated him. Oh my god, I <laughs> Holy hated shit. him so much. <laughs> I hated him so much. I was like, I, I put it on while I was drawing, mm. which is a bad idea, because I ended up watching it. You just didn't go with the pencil in your hand like... <laughs> god. Uh, and I... I because the first few minutes, well, not few minutes, the first twenty minutes, let's say, like that, was like, eh, it's you know, it's, it's yeah. I think I paused it a couple of times in the first yeah, twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, me too. And and you know, it was. But when the judge came in, and then he started doing this horrible fucking things, I was like, I want to kill you so bad. 
it was, okay. uh, it was and I'll like that you. was that was only a, like a fraction of the stuff that he was like pulling I know. in that, in that I know. trial um it really is one that you kind of have to go oh this was insane and then you have to go look up the actual like bits of it there's a great video by mm. um i don't know if you i like watching those like professionals reacting to like yeah. things in, in so um there's a there's a lawyer his name yes. is uh, legal eagle yeah i, I watched it as well he's uh, so great um <laughs> we'll put the video in the description it's worth yep. it i watch as well because he goes through like some of the bigger sort of like trial stuff i kind of mm -hmm. wish he'd done more like the yeah. i was like come on i want to this movie so long there's so many things you could be talking about um but like uh, he he does a great uh, video talking about how like think he like this is only this much of like all the batshit stuff that was going on, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. especially what happened to 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 Bobby Seal, which um, they obviously had condensed because this is a two hour movie. But like I think that was the most intense part of that for mm -hmm. me. It was really visceral, <laughs> and uh, Yaya um, who plays Bobby Seal. Fantastic. Yeah. I think he yeah, was fantastic. my my standout in the whole movie. Yeah. Yep, yep. I have to agree. I, uh, it was it was really great, honestly. Like I didn't think because I don't really like uh movies that involve trials and everything and I knew that this movie is basically death. Yeah. <laughs> of the way. And I was like that's why I was hesitant because we did talk about reviewing it when it came out. Yeah. But then I I wrote you that oh, I don't think I can watch it. Like, I'm, not gonna like, I'm not in the mood for this. And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it took us some time. Yeah. But uh, in the end, I didn't regret it. And and usually that ends up being a good thing mm. when I don't want to watch something. Because then when I watch it, it turns out to be great. And of course, afterwards, I'm like, oh, I, I was so stupid not watching this because it's actually great. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's better late than never. I always say that. Yeah. But, and yeah, the whole, I mean, the whole movie was... I, oh. and there's been, like, criticisms of Aaron Sorkin's directing style because he's not a particularly... I, do, I think the, the, the... It's it's not that he's a bad director, it's that he's just a bit dull. Like, there's not really a no. whole lot, like, particularly, like, visually stimulating about it, right? But yeah. I actually thought that a lot of the decisions that he made within this were, were quite well done and, and suited the thing very well. I haven't seen Molly's game, so it's hard for me to kind of compare. I the only, seen it um, I think it's, this is like his second one directing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like... he He's very clearly fun uh, function over like form. There's no like yeah. real sort of like splashy nature to it. He's literally just like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and it's going to convey this thing. Um, which I think is very much kind of in suiting with the way he writes as well, which is quite funny. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think he, yeah. There's, I've, I've seen a couple of people be like, you can, you can experiment a little bit more, Aaron. <laughs> Go a little <laughs> bit spicier. But I liked the use of the all the footage. Yes, that's um, what I wanted to see as well. Especially, especially within the when when the the riot started. Yeah. yeah. In the park where it's spliced between like the real footage and, and all the film stuff that they did for mm -hmm. the film. I was like, this is good. I like it this is. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I like that one as well. Was like, I don't know. I like his style. I, I don't know. It's I don't. Just... I think the problem is, is that he doesn't really seem to have style so much as it, it, he's just doing. He's just. He's just. He's just making pictures, right? Hmm. I don't know if I agree with that. Or I don't know. I'm just. I'm dull. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> no, it's fair. Like I said, I've only seen the one, so it's really hard to like. Yeah. Talk. I haven't watched expansively either, so. mm. uh, about it, but it's like, yeah, I can, in comparison to like the best team up of all time, which it was him, it was Aaron Sorkin and David Fincher for the social network. Um, yeah. It's kind of like, OK, if you'd gotten David Fincher to direct the trial of the Chicago 7, we probably would have had something maybe even more interesting. That's but alas, true. that's not the, he did a great job. Yeah, yeah. I think that especially here, I would say that the way he decided to go about it was more important than mm. to be like visually attractive yeah. or more attractive. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I think there were some really smart uh, things in there, like the uh, footage, as you mentioned as well. I really like how it ended. Uh, you know, when uh, Eddie Redmayne's character starts to read up, but yeah, uh, that the names. that that really got to me because um, I, I started I, crying. I, like I saw day. it coming, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be good." <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
I I was like, oh no, okay. That's when the tears started to flow. And then they, you know, they told us what happened to everyone. Some of them were shocking. Like I was like, yeah, it was really sad oh. to hear about, um, oh, Sasha Baron Cohen's character, whose name I can't, Abby. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Abby. Yeah, Abby. yeah. Um, I was like, what? Suicide? Yeah. What? I, I I was dumbfounded by that. I, I didn't think that, you know, he would ever do something like that. But. He was my other um, standout in the film, actually. Oh, he, he really amazing. fantastic job. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was very, very impressed with Sasha Baron Cohen, which uh, there's, there was a lot of talk about Sasha Baron Cohen being in this film specifically. Yeah. Because he's obviously such a uh, well, so well known for improvising. Like mm -hmm. he's a he's a sort of a master Im improviser, and yeah. Aaron Sorkin literally has it in his contracts that his actors cannot change any single any of his words. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like, no, 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 I wrote this. This is exactly yeah. what you're writing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, but he did great. He did great. Yeah, I think amazing. it works very well. Yeah, I liked um. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, the the other scene that I really, really liked was um, which actually builds it is is part of the 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 riot scene. It's it's the fact that it's shaped around um, uh, Mark Rylance's the... character giving that kind of like fake oh my um, god yeah interview with uh, um. Eddie Redmayne's character, um, mm -hmm, Tom Hayden, mm -hmm. just to yeah. be like, "Oh, so you want to go on the stand, do you? All right, let's play this thing out then." And it's oh just like, God, yeah. I thought I really liked that whole section; it was mm -hmm. very, very good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree. Good movie. Nice, nice. It is. It is. I I would recommend it definitely. Mm. Like you know, it's it's a it true. It's a bit slow uh, at at places. I would say that, but mm. once it picks up, it's like. <laughs> just happening and you're gonna hate the judge just a warning he did a great job by the way but you know i was like Ugh! it was like i'd like <laughs> just like the absolute arrogance uh, like oh, that comes out of uh, a guy who will um refuse to listen to the man who's like i'm not being represented in this trial my lawyer is not here i am not being represented i want to be representing myself and then uh, gets so frustrated with him that he actively goes, he, he gets the, um, oh, I can't remember what that, you know, the security people. Are, the marshals. The marshals, thank you. Yeah. Um, to bound and gag. Oh my God. The only black man on trial who is a he the head of the Black Panthers and then have the audacity then to be like, oh. I'm not racist. And yeah. I was just like, holy are, are shit. You are you trying to tell me that I am discriminating against a black against a black Nobody's people? ever said this to me before, and I'm like, oh, the, oh my god! I almost died at that scene. I was like, oh Jesus oh Christ! My like, god. Come on, come on! I mean, that was the fact so that that is to watch. That is like this is not like that is still a uh, attitude that people hold. Yep, obviously. Because that's why it was horrible to watch. That we, mm -hmm. like, I just. I She's I like, suffered Whoa. through that scene. I was like, nope, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. I, I was I I was considering like covering my eyes because I was like, this this can't be. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I got so fucking frustrated. I think that was one of the parts where I had to stop it. I was like, nope, mm -mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> and at that point, I was like invested. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, true. True then. Uh, all right. So, what else did you watch then? Yes. So, I watched a few, the other one was I watched it was a few good men. I actually watched a few good men first. I mm -hmm. um it been I don't know. I've been watching a bunch of like a uh, uh, I had watched some of those um uh, essay like movie essay stuff. There was somebody nice. talking about like a few good men and, and like what it does well and stuff. And I was like, mm -hmm. I've been meaning to watch this for a very long time, and I have time now. Because I'm decidedly not getting up or moving anywhere because my feet hurt. <laughs> like my Wednesday was like I'm not getting out of this bed unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm not walking anywhere. Uh, um, so I I stuck on a few good men and I yeah I really enjoyed it. I think I liked the trial of the Chicago Seven more. And it, maybe it was just because I went into a few good men kind of knowing everything about it really because it's mm -hmm. one of those really really famous films. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, the play is, it, that it's that it's based on is 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 incredibly. Um, I say mm -hmm. based on it is the play. It is it's the like, play. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just <laughs> more Sorkin. Um, I have it. It's it, it's one of those things. It's the first time I've really um, honed in on. There's like a particular criticism of, of Sorkin's work is that he 
like he writes these very interesting female characters, but he often has it so that they fail, and then male characters end up having to pick up like and and fixing mm-hmm. their mistakes. And I was like, oh yeah, he does do this a lot, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm like perfectly valid criticism, and I will continue to have said criticism. But I still yep. love Sorkin is still definitely one of my favorite writers. I just love listening to the way he writes dialogue. It's it's so. Mm-hmm interesting on the air yeah, yeah. Uh, but I was like the first time I was kind of sitting there going shit you really do have like a thing going on here huh <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah he's kind of like that I have to admit that as it's, well but he's still great though yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's a good movie I don't really know what to say about it to be honest because it's like like I said it's it's such a famous film um I was watching the whole end of it because then I went uh, back and I found that that League of Legal also did a bit where he talked about like a few good men, specifically the like the that that scene, the scene where he says you can't handle the truth and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Um, and they were like arguing back and forth on the stand. I was like, this definitely wouldn't be allowed. <laughs> Somebody should have objected by now. <laughs> like I think this counts as badgering the witness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alas. yeah. Very good movie. I like watching Tom Cruise in in films where he's not like. Tom Cruise, you know, <laughs> like action man Tom Cruise. I like it when he gets to like he he actually acts. <laughs> huh. I think I have three, four uh, movies that I really like that involve involve him because otherwise I don't like him. No, that, I that's know. A no I know in a way that is entirely reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Um But like, yeah, like, it's like on. I like I like being able to when I I mean it's been a while since I've um uh, watched stuff that you know hasn't been sort of modern day stuff or in like any of his action stuff i love the mission impossible movies mm. they, they read they recently they really have been like knocking them out of the fucking park um i think rogue nation is a is just freaking genius as a as an action film it's so good um and i'm very much looking forward to mission impossible 7 um <laughs> whenever that comes out um but uh i remember watching edge of tomorrow or live die repeat whatever you want to fucking call it <laughs> Oh my god! But that's Edge a really is one of them. That's yeah. a really, I love really good movie. <laughs> yep. And I think part of it is because like he has he has a character arc in it. He goes yep. from being this like wimpy fucking coward to like Tom Cruise. Like he yep. becomes Tom Cruise by the end of it. But it's a it's an arc. It's and an I was arc. Like, yeah. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I like this a lot. It was a very good movie. I, mean, I, really I liked like this one because he he gets to be kind of like cocky and like um and it, it's very like you know intellectual. Mm. Uh, role as opposed to hitting things <laughs> and running a lot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I really like him. I just tomorrow. Mm. And that's that's one of the movies I really like. Mm. I love Interview with the Vampire. I keep meaning to watch that. You haven't I haven't seen, seen, seen it. With the... <gasps> My heart. And it's actually it is genuinely one of those ones that I like. It, I keep seeing people, especially on my Tumblr, like posting gift sets of it, and I'm like. I really should watch this, and then I don't. <laughs> it's it's up on Netflix. Just saying. Is it now? It is. So I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite movies that involves vampires. I'm not gonna lie. Like I love is... vampire movies. Like <laughs> yeah, and and I'm just gonna say it. Anne Rice is one of the best writers when it comes to vampire stories. Like I freaking Isn't love the Anne books Rice as well. Isn't Anne Rice kind of a dick though? Yeah. <laughs> Like, Anne Rice <laughs> is, like, the worst for, like, people write fan fiction of her stuff and she sues them. Yes. Like, <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. He, yeah, let's, let's not talk about that part. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, Tom Cruise was really good in Interview with the Vampire. I Interview with the really... Vampire is not on Netflix in the UK. <gasps> Shit! We have it here in Hungary, so that's, like, a benefit. It's, it's recommending me Dracula on the BBC and I'm like, nah. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> damn. Um, what else? Wait, wait, wait. Interview with the Vampire. Edge of Tomorrow, I really like. Mm. Um, what's the other two? God damn, it, it, it's not going to come to me. I really like the War of the Birds movie. Yeah, I remember watching that movie way too young. I yes. have this memory of watching it uh, whilst I was on holiday in um, the US. We went to Seattle for um, a wedding. Mm. Uh, and then we went to a place called Lake Chelan. Um, and I just remember we were in this little, like, 
holiday home on by the lake and it was a very beautiful place i just have the, just have this very distinct memory of being in this like like really strange sort of house having like my, my parents were making like would make like margaritas and they'd make like mm-hmm. you know the mocktail type ones for us so they were yep, basically yep. just like lime slushies <laughs> <laughs> it's like imagine margarita it's just the slushy it's a lime slushy but not. really good but like i remember watching the scene it's like literally it's the only scene i remember in any like real clarity in that film and it's the bit right at the end of, i think it's right at the end of the movie when um they're hiding in the house and the the tentacle comes through and like starts oh, yeah. like when looking. Timber opens. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's just looking for them. Like that, it's the only bit of that movie that I remember in like vivid detail. <laughs> but, like, I remember watching it in specifically that house, and I had to have been like seven ah. at most. Nice. <laughs> so nice. I'm just like probably shouldn't have been watching that as a seven year old, but there you go. Oh well, it happens. It happens. Uh, and. It came to me. The other one is Minority Report. I... Oh, that's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, I love that film so much. I'm like, I can't watch that whenever. Colin Far- Farrell is a dick in it. So I'm like, but like, <laughs> he's a dick that like gets a redemption. I know. Life, so. I know. But still, like, I was so angry with him at the beginning. I was like, ah! <laughs> I, watched, I watched Minority Report on my, during, during my Colin Farrell binge a few years ago. Um, oh. And I really liked it. it was, it's, it's, it's but it, it's, it's such a strange sort of like the coloring and like whatever mm-hmm. the grading is on that film is so like the blacks are really black, really but everything black. else is very strangely blurry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just sort of like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's the future. It, it's the future. And everything's blurry <laughs> and just like like yeah. blue, <laughs> like white blue. I, I I I like that blue. I still I oh I still have some scenes in just in. I might watch it today. I'm not gonna lie. I really like that film. <laughs> Why not? Come on, it's a good one. Uh, yeah, that's the four. Tom yeah. Cruise movies. I think I those really are like. those are those are good picks. Yeah, she yeah, says I, having not seen Interview with the Vampire. Yes. Yeah. You 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 still have time. You can watch it. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's find out where it is. I just wrote vampire. I was about to write vampire with an interview. <laughs> God. Um, so I've been watching things as well. With the vampire? Oh, I totally was going to choose with the vampire. vampire. Uh, anyway, go. yes, what have you been watching? <laughs> I watched Black Widow. Ah, uh, like, yeah. Ah, uh, my heart. I've had, like, the, the reviews for it have been pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, it's really fucking good. Like it's it's Winter Soldier good <laughs> for me. It's like Scarlet is amazing in it. I had my doubts with Florence Pug because Midsummer was like a huge fucking disappointment. Is it? And I is it like, Pew? I thought Pew. I think Pug Pew. I, I don't know. I don't actually know. Check it. <laughs> Sorry, Florence. I didn't want to butcher your name. <laughs> it happens in this podcast a lot <laughs> that we just butcher names. Pew? Oh, Maybe gonna... it's Pew. Is it in France? I think it's I think it's I think it's Pew. Pew. It's Pew. Oh, there you go. Pew. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I just uh, it was like uh, no, and I was like I was a bit afraid because of that casting, but she's fucking great, so I was very happy with her as well. And obviously David Harbour is like uh, I love, I love that man. Come on, he's so good, and and the whole movie was just so well. Uh, structured as well. I I wrote a whole review on it, and I know that you haven't seen it, or I'm guessing that you haven't. I haven't it at yet. the time. <laughs> I think it literally so, came out two days ago in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So all I will say is that I think you're gonna enjoy it as well. I definitely did, and I will watch it again with Disney Premier Access because I can't wait. <laughs> mm. I, I'm restless. I I have to watch it again. Maybe I'll go see it next week after I'm done with all of my stuff. I, I highly recommend it watching it the cinema though because well come on it's Marvel and it's it's finally a Marvel movie back in the cinema so it was a very special experience <laughs> like I didn't think I always I am always emotional when it comes to cinema because it's still magic for me no matter what happens uh, but this one especially when the Marvel logo came, uh, came in I was like good this is really good <laughs> hold, on, hold on a second hold up <laughs> I, I need a minute <laughs> I was 
like, oh God. Um, so yeah, I watched Black Widow. I really liked it. Highly recommended. Uh, it's a bittersweet experience. I will say that uh, for obvious reasons, mm. I think. Um, and then um, I, I, I am watching Shit's Creek and I am now very involved. <laughs> Wait, whereabouts are you? I'm at season four. <gasps> oh, we yeah. met Patrick. <laughs> yes. I met Patrick. Yes, I love Patrick. Everybody uh, loves Patrick. <laughs> like Patrick is on. way Patrick. Like the introduction introduction of Patrick in that show is exactly when that show goes from being pretty good to fucking amazing. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I have to agree. Uh, I already cried on this. So oh like, my god! You know, come on. <laughs> like, I love David. David is is my love i just i yeah. can't i can't like come on david is amazing yep and it's just i just love the whole thing it's just so wholesome yep and i just don't want it to end yep. at this point like, oh my god you're gonna have such a good time with that i think season four is i think season four is my favorite it has my favorite episodes in it it's got a lot of really good especially ones to do with 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 patrick and david <laughs> I already like like those episodes. So, um, you know. <laughs> uh, did you have you gotten to the um, open mic? No, not yet. <gasps> okay, not yet. that one's gonna make you cry. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to cry because because that one makes me cry every time. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to cry yet. I already I cried at um, uh, at the graduation scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> Mora is a good mom. She's yes. a good mom. <laughs> I was like, ah, that's mine. Uh, and then um, I cried when they went to Mott's. Uh, that was in the previous uh, mm. season. It, it oh, was that, the, that was that the dance that yes. they went to? Yeah, they, yeah. they they all finally said, I love you to each other. Yeah, that was yeah. Actually, it's like, yeah, that's a that's Yeah, a that made me, that was the first time I cried on it. I was like, why? <laughs> why are you doing this? Uh, but I laugh a lot. I I really like it, so it's so good. It's it's, it's, it's a really good uh, series. I, I I have to admit, like you know, I was uh, I don't know why I didn't start it earlier, but now I can just watch all of them just together. I will <laughs> say that I think, yeah, season four has some of my favorite episodes in it, and so does season five. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, the last two episodes of season five both make me weep, uh, but like in a really good way. <laughs> No oh, God! <laughs> uh, all my tears are just gonna be gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, Stevie gets a really, really good moment at the end of season five, which is uh, my favorite moment in the pretty much the entire series. Ah, Stevie, I like who Stevie I love, and well. I'm kind of like repping today all of my like plaid. Yep. Every time, yeah, I've got a big sort of red one of these, right? And nice. Mum always calls it my Stevie shirt, and I'm like, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Stevie vibes definitely. I love Stevie so much. Yeah, Stevie is I great. love all of them though. That's yeah, like... all of them are great. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I I think I already told you this that uh, I always have a hard time with TV shows, especially because it's hard to like everyone. Right. And I don't think many TV shows manage to achieve that. But Shit's Creek is definitely on that list. Like, it's it's definitely a show where I'm like. I just like all of you. Yeah, like. they're just all like decent people. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. I like how they they are not making a big deal about who loves who and why. Like it's just a completely normal thing. Yep. I'm like, eh, okay, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So you should um, make sure you watch the um uh the the behind the scenes um documentary they did for the last season after after you finish the show oh i will because it because it is on netflix and that also made me cry <laughs> great so it's just let's let's cry <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, like, but it's it's like yeah it's worth it it's just very very sweet and i would also recommend if you can, oh i don't I think it might it might actually be in the um in the behind the scenes sort of documentary thing but uh you should look up they they did they did these little like like three minute long videos of like the car sitting around the table like after every episode uh-huh. where they kind of talked about stuff because uh, nice. Dan Levy would like talk them through like I did things that he was thinking about when he was writing the episodes and things that they really thought was funny and like what, what mm-hmm. you know all the things that they found really particularly emotional and that stuff um they're, they're worth watch I think they should most of them at least from like season three should be on YouTube but you might need to like put a VPN on for like the US or Canada to, do ah, it, okay. to see all of them 
but they're, yeah, they're, they're worth a watch. I, I really enjoyed those as well. They're just, oh, just what, a, what a, a lovely selection of, of good people. And I think uh, there is a show that Alexis, the woman who plays Alexis, whose name it is... <laughs> it's in Annie Murphy. Thank you, Brain. Um, <laughs> Annie Murphy is in a show that's on AMC at the moment that's just started called uh, Kevin Can Fuck Himself. Which oh, I, yes. it yep. looks pretty good. I haven't got around to watching it yet, but like I keep seeing little yeah. bits and pieces from it. But like yep. it looks very interesting. Mm. So for any mm. uh, Shit's Creek fans who'd like to keep watching, you know, good people, Annie Murphy oh, is yeah. a new show. There it is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and then the last thing I watched, I watched it yesterday, and it's <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> uh, it's called Werewolves Within. Uh, I see you tweet this. Yes, and. I am in love with it. Like, imagine Shaun of the Dead mixed with a werewolf story and a, a crime drama, and everyone is just fucking hilarious. In it. Like, and it's based on a video game. I was like, like the first thing that I, uh, I was suspicious about is that uh, it, it was made by Ubisoft, and I was like, mm. you mean the gaming company? <laughs> and oh my god, it's so good like i don't think i left this hard uh, at a movie in a long time it's very very well done it's a bit it's a bit gory at points <laughs> but it's it's worth it <laughs> it's just pure madness let's let's uh, say it like it's it's pure chaos and it's glorious <laughs> interesting is that on um it's on demand okay i was like what what's that available on it's on demand yeah yeah but I, I highly, I, I think you would love it. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I got really strong uh, Edgar Wright live story. Like, it's like, oh, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> I don't think it's out over here yet. Is it not? No, can't see anywhere to watch it online over here. I don't think it's been <gasps> distributed to the UK yet. But I will keep my eyes open uh, and yes, pick it please. up when it's available. Yes, please. It's it's it's, it's really great. <laughs> I really, really love that movie. Like, oh god, it's madness. <laughs> I can't. I want to spoil it so bad, but I'm at the Done. same time. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued <laughs> now. I want to. I want to. see what what what's all the, what's the fuss is about. Yes, what? yes. I'm. I'm gonna shut up. Done. Just watch it. Well, don't jump entirely. This is a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I have a question for you. You have a question for me. Okay. Yes. It's a very important one. Okay. Okay. Have you watched Train to Busan yet? <laughs> no. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like right over there. It's on my thing. I just I want to be able to watch it where I'm not like you know dead tired. I do want to give it like the time it deserves. I just haven't like it's 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 on my mind. Like I I put it in front of the TV where I could be because my PlayStation my because I got a new PlayStation. I bought a PlayStation Five. Um, so I brought PlayStation 4 now there's up in my room which is very nice because mm -hmm, it means mm -hmm. I get to watch my Cowboy Bebop and Blu-rays whenever there you I go. want them there you go. <laughs> but um, you have to understand there were many nights whilst we, I was working uh, thinking like I could stick a movie on I could, maybe I'll watch Train to Busan and then I, and then I uh, will go no I'm a bit tired I'll just like put an episode of Cowboy Bebop on and then within 5 minutes of these 20 minute episodes I would be asleep so <laughs> Okay. Give me a chance. I will <laughs> I will try to watch it by next week. How does that sound? It sounds it sounds marvelous. Okay. I, I wanna I wanna talk about it. <laughs> okay. I will yeah, I will try and watch it for next week, but um, you know, hopefully that I Yes. No, you know what? Yes, I will watch it for next week. <laughs> exciting, um, exciting. Which oh. reminded me that I also watched Eight Night, which is another Korean movie oh, yeah. on Netflix. Netflix original. So Please watch it. It's really great. There's a film that I didn't realize. Like there was um, uh, Justin H. Min, who plays Ben in the Umbrella Academy. Yes. Um, is has been promoting this movie that he was he'd made called After Yang for a while, and I was like, okay, it was it was very cool. He's made a cool movie. That's that's fun. And then I very recently found out, as in yesterday, that it's got Colin Farrell in it as well. And I was, and it's also got Jodie Turner Smith in it. And I was like, this Ooh. is an amazing cast. <laughs> a really Ooh. interesting premise. It's like, um, 
Colin after Farrell and Yang? Joe, after Yang, yeah. Ah. Um, it's got. It seems to be about um, this couple who are played by Colin Farrell and Jodie uh, Turner Smith, um, and their adopted uh, son. Um, uh-huh. It's like a slightly futuristic piece where they like basically get him like a robot sibling. Um, Ooh. but then the, the said robot sibling breaks down and there's like some kind of, um, uh, Does it turn into a massacre or no, something? No, 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 it's not, it's, it's like, I, th- I believe it's a very cerebral sort of like expo- ah. exploration of like humanity as, as all good sci-fi things are. Um, cause it's like, uh, the, th- the variety review that I read basically said like, well, if you've got like a robot sibling, it's not yes. like a goldfish that you can flush down the toilet and just get a new one right you're yep. gonna have to figure out how to fix it because <laughs> it's like this is, you've basically got a new like a it's they're basically it's basically another person but like it's a person that you have to f- be able to fix so it's like he has yeah. to i believe colin farrell's character has to try and like figure out how to fix it um with some interesting results i don't know the 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 concept of it sounded really interesting and I love Colin Farrell very dearly as we oh already God, mentioned yes. um, yeah. and Jodie Turner-Smith has been having kind of a skyrocketing really interesting amazing career at the moment mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and Justin H. Minton again is incredible and I love him very dearly as well so I'm like I don't really watch this but it just premiered at Cannes I think yes Yep, yeah, I just watched so it. So it's it, it's one of those things where it's like this probably isn't going to be available for me to watch for a while, but I am yep. interested, <laughs> very yeah. very interested in, in what what it could be because it's one of those ones where I'm like, oh, interesting, a cerebral mm-hmm. like sci-fi thing about the exploration of what it means to be human. Yes, please. Yep. Now I am intrigued as well. I was like, you said Colin Farrell, and I was like, huh? Mm. What? Okay, <laughs> so it's on my watch list now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I got, I got to say, I've got this dead on there. I have a list of things I'd like to talk about because uh, yes, I keep seeing little trailers and stuff. Um, uh, I apologize because you know a couple of these I don't think you're gonna be uh, the one of them. I think you'll definitely be into, but I'm okay. gonna go to that one in a second. Um, okay. The first one is the trailer for the third season of Succession dropped like two days ah, yes. ago and I forgot how obsessed I am with this show because it started it came up and I was like oh fuck yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> it looks fucking brilliant I I forgot just like finishing season two and I'm going oh man oh fuck okay and it was one of those things that like you know you, you kind of have to well, after you finish the season, you know the next one's not going to come out for a bit. You just kind of have to push it out of your, your mind for a while mm-hmm, and be like, mm-hmm, I can't mm-hmm. think about this too much because otherwise I'll just get very annoyed that there's not more of it all the time. I and mean, then this this trailer dropped and it was just sort of like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is going to be fucking juicy. And I <laughs> I cannot recommend to you it enough. Like I got my friend Cass to watch it. Uh, and so far, he's the only person I know who does watch it. So every so often, we just like he watched the whole thing, and we were having like long discussions about all the characters. Everybody yeah. in it is phenomenal. The guy who played the guy who wasn't Sasha Baron Cohen's character, he was who wasn't uh, Abby Hoffman in the Trials of the Chicago Seven, the other guy. Yeah, it's Jeremy yes. Strong is is the yeah. actor's name. I just don't remember the character's name, but he plays okay. Kendall Roy, who is like one of the. He was kind of like the son tapped to take over the company. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very much a, a sort of satire of those like the Murdochs and and of those like big media um, families who kind of run the news, like those kind of um, like overly rich white uh, American families that like are just like yeah, we've just bought all the news networks and now we run the news. It's fine. Um, it's uh, it's. I hit so yeah, Jeremy Strong is 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 incredible in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, as are you know the rest of um uh, his kids and Brian Cox plays the sort of Ooh. patriarch of the family and yes. he's terrifying. And it, it is, it's just I can't it like it's funny, mm. and biting and like it's so dramatic. Like the first, I got I started watching it like ages ago. Like I watched the first couple episodes and I was like. Eh, is pretty good i'm not sure how into this i am but i should, people keep talking about how amazing it is so i'll go back to it and i think it's somewhere around like episode four and i think it's around the time because he um this is a little bit of a spoiler but like 
uh, it does happen within the first episode. Um, mm-hmm. Brian Cox's character, uh, um, Logan Roy, has a stroke in the first episode. So he's okay. not... And the whole kind of discussion becomes, who's going to take over the company? Is he going to be of you know, sound mind enough to be able to like run the company again? Is he going to mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. become well enough to... like? Uh, and around like episode three or four, he kind of comes back into the picture. And there's just like this level of dread and like fear that comes out of everybody. And like it, 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 it's like the conflict that the show desperately like needs uh-huh. suddenly comes like front and center. And you're like, oh, OK, <laughs> what's this about then? And then it just gets even more batshit from there. The end, the, both the end of season one, which is insane. And then the, I would say the last like 10 minutes of season two which plays out so fucking beautifully um because it's it's one of those ones where it's like the payoff is the thing that is incredible about it right yeah yeah uh like you've been you've had 19 episodes up until this point um kind of building up to this one sort of moment and Mm -hmm. i literally i was i was watching it in here i'm pointing because that's where my tv is yeah Um, yeah. i was in bed (laughs) Like watching the episode, and then like the this sort of like reveal happened, and I mm-hmm. literally just went. I like sat up from a lying position, was like, <laughs> "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> and like sat there for like ten minutes afterwards, like, "Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> the ramifications!" <laughs> it's so good. I'm so excited. It's coming out in uh, the fall sometime. It just says fall because HBO. <laughs> oh. There's no like specific thing um at the moment so it's like we're waiting for a day but it's like i've got the first two seasons on dvd and like even though i won't really need to buy the third d- season on dvd i'm still going to because i want to yep. be able to own <laughs> yeah i know what i'm doing but like yeah that's one i'm very excited for and i would absolutely mm-hmm. recommend to you if you ever get it, like feel like you want to watch something really really sort of dramatic and interesting it's fucking fucking brilliant I might um, give it a go. Also, also who it, I am um, fucking uh, Matthew uh, McFadden is yes. in it, and he's oh. uh, he's he's brilliant. Oh, um, okay. My next point, yes, uh, which is the it, it leads onto this point. This 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 isn't the point yet, but like it leads into this point is that yesterday this guy mm-hmm. Aaron Tveit, who I'm a huge fan of, announced that he's going to be in the new uh, Ryan oh, Murphy American anthology series, Stories. American yeah. Horror Stories, and I was I yep. sat there and I was like. Am I gonna have to watch American Horror Story? <laughs> yeah, you might. I think I might. I like. <laughs> I am genuinely like really interested now because it's um. I f- I was kind of sitting there going, why are all these Broadway people in in American Horror Story? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it's Ryan Murphy. Okay, this makes more sense now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but um, I yeah, I just I love Aaron Tveit, and I haven't watched. I watched the first season of American Horror Story in its entirety. And then yes. I watched half of the second season because I oh, didn't. The second watch... season is the best. I didn't like, but I, when I watched it, I was I was kind of going through a Zachary Quinto thing at the time. Yes, yeah. and I knew that he was the bad guy, but I didn't really want to see him be that. <laughs> no, but that's the best season. Kate. But like, you here's the thing. It. Here's the thing. After like, literally during, I don't. Like, we've talked about this before. I don't get nightmares really. I have like kind of intense like dreams sometimes, but I don't have like yeah. nightmares. Yeah. Um, I don't have things where I wake up and I don't like it. it like literally have like actively terrible dreams because like I mm-hmm. feel like in some form or another I'm usually a vaguely aware of like that I am dreaming in some form or another. Yeah. Um, but. American Horror Story gave me really intense, like, strange dreams in a way that I am not used to, nor am I a particularly big fan of. Um, so I kind of, yeah, I stopped in the second season. And I went into the third season because it hadn't aired at the point I started watching the second season. Um, so I, I, I was watching the third season, but the third season was kind of dull. <laughs> and I just yeah. sort of, like, dropped off from it, like, after, yeah. like, a few episodes, and I just didn't go back. Um mm-hmm. So that that's so far my only real like investment into it. I really liked the first season. I really I liked it a lot. Um, yeah. I stand by not really wanting to see Zachary Quinto be that kind of guy. Like there's like a, there's a difference between like him as like Skylar in yeah in, in Heroes. Heroes. Is yeah. it is it Skylar? Is it it's Siler, isn't it? Siler. Siler. I knew yeah. it was something like it's been like I was about to look at my watch like six or seven years since I watched Heroes. It's it's been a while. Um, yeah. Uh, 
And it's, it's it, there's a difference between like Silo, who's just sort of like he murders people, and yeah. this guy who like skins people, and there's like other slightly more intrusive and and gross, yeah. and, like body autonomy autonomy stuff that I'm like I don't really want to see you associated with like that. I'm like I'm good. <laughs> It's a bad thing, though. I will stand by that forever. I'm not saying it's. I'm not. I'm not saying in any way that it was bad. I'm not, in fact, the stuff that I was watching of it was very good. It was just a matter of like, I like this actor, and I don't really want to see him be that kind of bad guy. Well, well, come on, come on. But I am very intrigued by this American Horror Stories thing. It's gonna be different it could, it's from like, American Horror Story. Apparently. Yeah. I don't. The fact that they've called it American Horror Story and then American Horror Stories is like, oh come on, guys! <laughs> you couldn't come up with something a bit more like different. Apparently <laughs> not. Apparently not. It's got the same acronym. <laughs> Sorry, initialism. It's an initialism. initialism. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Um, so American Horror Stories. It's so it's like the show is. It's like. The, each episode is going to be its own self-contained story, right? That's the yes. idea. Yeah. So yeah, I could. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could just watch the one he's in. <laughs> Maybe he's gonna be in all of them. Yeah, he might be. I don't know. I, I know he's um, the the thing that, that I saw somebody pointing out that um, because they did. I don't know how into like the Broadway stuff you are, but have you? you do you watch the mis- miscast? Yes. Yeah. So they did miscast this year. He did. He did one uh, with Gavin Creel. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is kind of like the sequel to the one that he did back in, I think it was like 2015 or something, where mm-hmm. he and Gavin Krill did Take Me or Leave Me. Yes. Uh, oh, for people who don't know, because I feel like I probably should explain. Oh, yeah, not everybody. Yeah, maybe. So the miscast <laughs> is a thing that they do every year in the Broadway community where they get Broadway actors, actresses and other stuff to, they perf- they get to perform songs. Um, they're usually performed by the opposite gender. So mm-hmm. men usually will perform songs that are usually sung by women and, and vice versa. So in the miscast that was about five years ago, Aaron Tveit here and uh, Gavin Creel, who was also a big Broadway guy, I think he was in uh, the Book of Mormon. That's mm-hmm. right, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, did a pr- he, they did a version of Take Me or Leave Me, which is fantastic, and I absolutely recommend going to watch. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. But then they came back this year because they obviously had to do like sort of remotely done ones uh, and they were kind of filmed separately and they were doing mm-hmm. a duet from the Jacqueline Hyde musical and yes. then right at the end of it he turns up like in the same room as him and they're like wow I can't believe they're in the same place and then somebody pointed out that oh it's because they were both filming American Horror Stories because <laughs> they're in the same episode there you go <laughs> like ah things mm. make sense now but yeah. mystery is solved <laughs> I, I, I you're a I, I think we've talked a little bit about it before but you're a big sort of American Horror Story yeah. fan I believe so are you looking forward to this or did you watch the trailer the other day I didn't watch the trailer because I just don't like watching trailers anymore that's fair I understand <laughs> I got to the point where I'm like you are giving me too much like I don't want to see. I will trailer. say I don't think that the trailer really gives away anything. It just kind of gives oh. you like I I, I guess little glimpses it. of like some of the different stories that they're going to be going okay. into. Okay. I didn't really get much about like any kind of real plot from any of them. So. Okay. Okay. Then then I I might check it out. Um, I love American Horror Story, but I am very specific about which seasons I like. Right. Like uh, there were seasons that were just bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but uh, they were just like unwatchable to me. Um, and uh, you know, I think uh, when they lost uh, Jessica Lange uh, after season four, I believe it was like, uh, <laughs> like come on, she was like. Uh, uh, but Lady Gaga did an amazing job. I'm just gonna say in in Hotel. So I'm like. That was one of the ones that I got very tempted to go back and, and like try and watch. It's, it's probably it, one of the best ones. Because uh, the other thing is that I love Matt Boma. I have had yes. a very long-standing crush on Matt Boma <laughs> since, since like white collar. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, yeah. Understandable. Let's be fair. Uh, but that's that's another really good season. If I could, if I would have to rank it, then it would be Asylum, which is season two, mm. and then Hotel, which is Lady Gaga's season. Like, is that like season five? I think that's season. F- Five? Four? I think it's five. Five or four? Because because um, Jessica Lang left after Covenant, I think. Oh, that was uh, season the, three. The witches. Uh, 
Yeah, the, 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 the yes. Witches was, was season three because that was the last yeah, one I yeah. watched. So yeah, it must, yeah. I guess Hotel was four. I think so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I saw this, I was like, this could be great, but I'm a bit afraid that it it, it, it won't be. I'm, I'm a bit on edge. I'm like, do I, do I, am I interested? And then you tweeted uh, mm, about it, it and I was I like, was explaining, um, yeah. yeah, now I'm interested. <laughs> I just, I, I, I mean, I will watch. If, if, if Darren Tveit is one of those actors where, like, when he kind of because he does like obviously a lot of theatre because he is a Broadway guy and he's in Moulin Rouge mm-hmm. in, on Broadway at the moment. So if anybody's very curious, you should go see that. I'm going to Which see. Which is Moulin, my favorite musical. I'm so. going to see Moulin Rouge in the West End in December. <sighs> I'm taking my mother. It's going to be a very good time. Stop it! I'm not. I'm not envy, and it's my birthday month as well. So oh I'm not no. Really <laughs> That's my all-time favorite musical. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I I love the soundtrack and um, oh, it's so good. Um, but like so, and obviously since Graceland, I've just been like, I I always want him to come back to the TV. I they, um the mini series that they did um, uh, I think it was 2017, beginning of 2017. Uh, called Brain Dead, which was a yes. very silly show, which I very much enjoyed. And he was great in it. And I just mm-hmm. love watching him and stuff. So whenever he's like, I'm doing stuff for TV, I'm like, great, fantastic, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> which actually brings me on to my next point, which is yes. to do with this particular picture, which is a show mm-hmm. called Schmigadoon, which is coming out next week. Okay. I think it's on the 16th. Um, so yes, this is, this is, this is Schmigadoon. And it is a, um, it has got um, Keegan... Oh, I can never remember his full fucking name. Hang on. I, I, I think I know who you're talking about. Keegan-Michael Key. I was like, that that's, was the name the was in my head. And I was like, oh, God, no, it's too many names. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Keegan. Keegan-Michael Key and Cecily Strong are like this sort of like professional couple that are okay. kind of having problems. And then they, they get lost on a hike and they go over a, uh, a bridge and they find themselves in a town where life is a musical. Like a proper, <laughs> like... 60s like intense yes. like, oh, like the your Oklahomas and, and all these sort of stuff like big yes. musical numbery things and they're like we're stuck in a musical and they're I'm like watching it. hating everything and I think the concept is that they can't leave until they like they have to be they have to leave with their like true love and otherwise they can't cross the bridge and they're like well this is ridiculous so they're like the cynical sort of like the, everything about this is the same for everybody else is like actively living a musical and it's got Broadway legends galore. Alan Cumming is in it. Kristen Chenoweth is in it. Um, this guy's in it. Um, oh, there's there are so many. Hang on, let's see if I can find some more. Schmigadoon. It's got a great name. It's on Apple TV. That is. Uh, um, oh, then I will definitely watch it. <laughs> yeah, and it is, starts on Friday the sixteenth. I think the first two episodes are going up then. Um, the tra- the re- the reviews were very good. It's got ninety one percent so far on Rotten Tomatoes. Nice. Uh, nice. I want to see. Give me the cast. I want to see the cast. Uh, Alan Cumming, Fred Armisen, nice. Nice. Kristen Chenoweth's in it. Um, nice. Those are, I think, some of the the, the huge ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely watch it now. I'm it's intrigued. apparently only six episodes, which is uh, oh, that's which short. That's but, even um, better. <laughs> I think it's a, it, it looks like it's a sort of like one and done sort of thing. Um, you know, where it's like one season, bish bash bosh, we're going to just you know, knock it out. Um, I which I'm, I am also okay with. I'm absolutely okay with. Um, it's, yeah, and I just, actually, I've been looking forward to this one for a while because obviously I follow Aaron to it's Kavir quite closely because it's one that I, I, I very much enjoy. Um, and I love Alan Cumming, which is so, yes. this is like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. The title and concept Ooh. is a parody of the 1947 Broadway musical Brigadoon, which hence the, Ooh. yeah. Um, there, there, there are a lot of, great and very exciting things about this and I'm very nice. very excited to, to start watching it my dad actually t- oh yeah that's the other thing Martin Short is a guest star in it as well <gasps> oh I like Martin Short yes um, I, to the point where my dad found it on Apple TV and turned to us and went there's a thing coming out on Apple TV that I think you and your mother would be very interested in and he was like I think it's called something like Schmigadoon and I'm like yep no I know that one <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited I am going to watch it yeah, I I will watch it as well. I'm very excited about good. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds great. What's yeah. the fourth one? So the did fourth one is the one. Uh, the fourth one came out today. Uh, did you ever watch Leverage? No. Ah, shit. 
Oh, well. Um, <laughs> well, Leverage was a show that was on, oh, like a really weird network. I actually can't remember the name off, that, off the top of my head now. Um, uh, it started in like 2008, ended in 2012, had five seasons. It is about a group of thieves in a kind of like Robin Hood style thing where they, they, they completely like, they steal and like destroy the reputations of, of, of rich people who like use their power and money to like screw over the little guy. And then mm-hmm. uh, and they, they steal from them to, to, to you know, take him down a peg or anything. And it had nice. five excellent seasons. It's a really great show, but they've just come back with, like, a, a new sort of, like, reboot season um, uh, that came out today. I've watched oh. three episodes of it, and it is fucking great. And it's, like, still the same ridiculous show <laughs> that it was <laughs> back in 2008, like, 12... Mm-hmm. Um, I really recommend going to find it if you can get your hands on it because it's oh. a fun. It's a really fun. It's like every episode's a heist. You know, it's like a every episode is they're doing silly little like Ocean's Eleven style um, heists where you kind of they get to a point where it's like, oh no, it looks like they failed, and then they and then suddenly it turns out actually they were they had thought this thing through, and then they go back and they show you how they did the whole thing. It's great. Um, uh, 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 Beth Reesgraf. Elden Hodge, uh, El, El, is it El, no, I've said his name wrong. Elder, El, the Eldest. <laughs> look it up. Look it up. Aldous, Aldous Hodge, there you um, go. and um, Kristen, Christian. Oh, shit. I am so <laughs> bad with names. <laughs> Me too. So it's Christian fine. Kane. Are there they you like, go. Uh, th- th- there's, there's five of them, but those three in particular were always the highlight of the original show for me, and having them back is so worth it. <laughs> I believe you. So worth one. it. Oh, that's a yeah. You, um, yeah, you should know Christian Kane. He was in, I think he pops up in an episode of of, of Supernatural. Actually, he's a, oh, yeah, a yeah, really yeah. good friends with um, Jensen Ackles. Um, oh, okay. He's a Texas boy, you know. Oh yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. He's he's very funny. They're like they've already like smattered in the like ongoing jokes from like the original series like like catchphrases that people had and all this sort of stuff but in a way that feels very just sort of like oh they're back <laughs> like they did the thing <laughs> nice, uh, nice and it's just, it's just a really it's a really it's a fun show uh which i and it, it was one of those ones that i wasn't expecting to enjoy so much and like <laughs> um and it all get like so like emotionally sort of invested in when it like <laughs> it was coming to an end. You're sitting there going, "No, no. my children, my <laughs> <laughs> my stealing team." Um, the the original series had Timothy Hutton in it, but Timothy Hutton's oh. not in this season because of some allegations. Um, uh, uh, so they've kind of I don't want to say replaced, but it kind of they filled that hole with Noah Wiley. Who is, as always, wonderful. <laughs> I love Noah. Oh God. Um, okay. Yeah, and the whole thing is just great, and I would absolutely recommend. I like I said, I watched three episodes this morning, and I was like, this is just great. I missed this show. <laughs> I have to check it out. I was worried about like I watched like the first ten minutes. It got it was a bit like. But it, the the show was always a bit campy. Like it's mm-hmm. just sort of built in. Um, there's mm-hmm. like an element of campiness to it. Um, but like the first ten minutes, I was like, "Oh, this is like a little bit like some of this writing is a bit off." And then after they got up past like that little bit, I was like, "Oh no, no, no! There's the show. <laughs> there it is. There's the show that I remember." Because there's like a whole bit where they like reunite and um, uh, uh, the woman. Oh, I can't remember her name. <laughs> Everybody's name is 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 escaping it's me. It's fine. It's fine. She's a she's a British actress. She's in, like been in like uh, Gina Bellman. Thank you, Google. Ah, Gina Bellman. You she does this thing where she says like because they all have like roles. So she was the grifter. Uh, Eldest Hodge was the hacker. Uh, mm-hmm. Christian Kim was the hitter, and Beth Reesgraf um, was Beth Reesgraf was the um, thief. And there's just this moment where she like is she's kind of sitting there. She's looking really forlorn and sort of sad. And then she goes, "Grifter." And they all turn up and they say their own like positions, like one by one. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> it's a bit like that was bad, you guys. That was really not very good." 
in, in after happens. that it was fine uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a really great show and I missed it very much and I would recommend I it to you, you. I believe you I, I will check it out and if we are talking about news yes one of my favorite ones is uh, my heart skipped a beat when I saw it because it was unexpected but the best boy in the whole universe Dieter from oh, Army of yeah. the Dead is getting his own movie mm-hmm. <laughs> called Army of the Thieves and it's not only that Matthias is coming back to play Dieter, he will also direct the movie. <laughs> so oh, that's like, right. I did not know that. Yeah. I... So I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess that you you still haven't watched it. I have not watched it, it no. <laughs> Once you get around to it, you're going to realize that I, I... Dieter obsession is... His, the, from what you've told me, he seems exactly <laughs> like the type of character that I will love. So I'm I'm fully on board already. <laughs> I just, oh god. But I saw the pictures as well. And not that the Emmanuel is going to be in it, who I dearly love. And, uh, you know, but when I saw that Dieter is back, I was like, yep. Here's my money. Take it. I'm coming. <laughs> Bring more Dieter content and I'm happy. <laughs> But obviously, the question is that it's it, it cannot be another zombie movie because it's before Army of the Dead. Hmm. So I'm like, hmm, what are you gonna do with it then? Hmm, interesting. So I I guess because it says that uh it's it's another heist movie, then uh, it can be very interesting if they do it right. So I'm very. I was, excited. Thinking, I was thinking if it's a heist movie, but it's still set in the same universe, maybe it'll play up until the point of the zombies. Maybe. Maybe. That was that was my first thought. Uh, I think they did a thing about it in Empire this month. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I, I'm looking around because I think my copy of Empire is on my bed somewhere. No, I can't oh, see it oh. from here. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's, it's it, those bits of news I usually kind of flick through. It's usually like in the top twenty it, that when I flick through my Empire thing, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, and then I kind of flip past it. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, I am super duper excited for that. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we got um, another trailer for What If. Oh yeah. Uh, and it's it's once again bittersweet because that's mm. gonna be the last time we're gonna hear Chadwick's voice. So. You know, the trailer itself I, is like... Oh. That was a question of mine, actually, because I wasn't sure if that was actually him in, it's him. in in the thing. It was one of those... It was in those things I was kind yeah. of like, did they did they get somebody else? Or did it was like... Did they, no, it's him. Yeah, oh, that is that him. is very... Yeah. Oh. It's it's a bit it? like... Mm. I'm, I'm very uh, <laughs> excited and, like, terrified and, and uh, amused by the entire concept of, like... Loki's clearly building up to, like, this point... Where they're going to break, like the entire timeline, like yep. that's clearly where the next episode is going to go. Yep. Um, which we, let's just leave all the thoughts and stuff until like after the last episode because I feel like we've got one more episode left, and if we start talking about it now, we will we won't have enough to talk about when we actually talk about the whole show in its entirety. Yeah. Um, but like they're clearly getting ready to like break the whole thing. But like then they came out with this trailer. I was like, look how we're going to explode everything. <laughs> <laughs> Look how crazy everything's gonna get, guys. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's it's gonna be very interesting. I'm like, once again, they. I hate, I hate how they finish the episodes. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you can't leave it like this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, honestly specifically this week's episode. I was like, again, <laughs> why? I, I, I was like, ah, no. <laughs> um. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I I cannot wait. I I think one thing is quite certain at this point is that the reason that we are not getting the Spider-Man trailer because Loki it's is gonna, gonna spoil happen. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm like, hmm. I I I tend to believe that theory because you know. I also I also think it's like one of those things where it's like you gotta. I only have trailers out for like two of the upcoming movies at a time, that kind of thing, because we've still got. Shang Chi to come out, and obviously the Eternals. Yep. Yep. Um, so it's like I reckon sometime, probably around the time Shang Chi comes out, we'll get the trailer for Spider Man. That's my guess. Maybe I That's wouldn't. Like, Sp- I... like, Shang Chi comes out at the beginning of September, right? Yes. Spider Man's not out until December. That's like yeah. a four month period where, like, I think that's a good place to slot that in. 
I don't know. I I I wouldn't. I will say this: that I wouldn't be surprised if the Loki episode would end and we would get the Spider-Man trailer afterwards. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Like, you know, I I feel like it's gonna have like a really heavy impact on on the Spider-Man. What is, what is the um the hang on, phase four movie list? I, I clicked the wrong one, but there you go. <laughs> Because uh, I can't remember what order they're coming out in. Oh, so Mon <laughs> the um the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness movie is not out until next year. Yes. That was what I was trying to say, but Multiverse of Madness was difficult to get out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I reckon now that Black Widow's out, we're probably speeding towards more likely getting a, a Spider-Man trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I reckon so. I reckon somewhere around the time Shang-Chi comes out we'll get a Spider-Man trailer. That's my guess. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. You, ne you never know. Like, you know, there are a lot of speculations who's gonna be the big bad of Loki, let's call it that. Uh, I haven't read any point... of it. I literally have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, the... the one is obvious is is Kang uh, Kang that's how you say his name uh, I, I might be saying his name wrong uh, so the main villain from the next Ant Man movie Kang Kang I don't know anything about like half of the movies that are coming out like oh, I no. really don't I don't know who Kang is I don't know <laughs> I just want to like see the thing and go okay cool I will find it. Kang. I said it I've, right. I've got I've got no context for any of the comic stuff. I I go strictly <laughs> by what's being shown to me on screen, and then yeah, the occasional um, bit of information that I learn not by my own doing, and because people keep like the whole everything that I learn about like Mephisto came from everybody who kept making speculations oh, during yeah, Wonder yeah. Vision. Like I don't know shit. I don't. Uh, Kang would make sense because he's one of the timekeepers in the comics. Okay. Uh, so he would make sense uh, because he's also uh, Kang the Conqueror and uh, he's going to be the bad guy in Ant Man, uh, the next Ant Man movie, Quantumania. So, this since sounds... I had the theory. This sounds vaguely familiar. I feel like I yes. may have heard a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because I had the theory, we talked about it with Tinnet, that um, the TVA is in the Quantum Realm and we're going to have a Quantum Mania movie. And we know that Kang is going to be in it, played by the amazing Jonathan Majors, by the way, who's uh, in Lovecraft Country that they just cancelled for season two and fuck you, HBO. Um, but <laughs> anyway, uh, Kang is a, is, a, is a really good guess, I would say, that he's going to show up in this. Maybe not. But I since he's a timekeeper, like, it's a possibility. I'm I, just saying. I still find the concept of... of uh, um... Like they go into that that portal and it's another Loki. That's on. That's the second possibility. I'm not gonna lie. Like, like that's yeah. that's the one that I've seen that that, that Thinneth mentioned. More, yeah. And I was like, that's funny. All right. It's a possibility. I can take that on. Because I mean, I li I literally have no idea where this is going, and I'm like, great. I am terrified though, and I know we said we were gonna talk about this, but now we're into it now. Um, yeah. I'm terrified that they're using this show to retire Tom Hiddleston because I see it's I, the entire like last part of that episode I was like oh no they're gonna kill him oh no oh no he's just gonna actually be dead and they've just gotten rid of him and we're gonna have like I was like I think that Sophia um I can't remember how la how to say her last name um, do, 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 it's Di Matteo or something like that yeah yeah we don't she's doing we a great job with names <laughs> she's doing a fantastic job she is. I yeah. don't no, if I care about her enough yet to be like Loki, like just her, nope. like no, <laughs> like the I... whole concept. Of, I was sat there, I got really like terrified whilst I was watching the episode. Like, Are they gonna kill? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't yes. be dealing with this. <laughs> Here, here's the thing that I I think was a very important moment in uh, the fifth episode mm. is when uh, Richards. Was, was great. Classic Loki. I love Richard uh, E. Grant anyway, but like, like he really did on. like fucking kill yeah. him. Uh, he was fucking... Uh, I was crying very heavily then. He died. Uh, but uh, 
when he talks about what happened with Thanos. That's exactly he, what I thought. Like, I was sitting there, Jesus that, Christ. That, I think, that is a very subtle pointer that it's possible that that's what happened with our Loki in that yeah. game. And I, I think they're going to do some trick. I'm, I'm, maybe we're not going to have this Loki uh, anymore, but I think that's a trick. I don't think... I think Tom Hiddleston just loves to play Loki so much, for one, uh, that I don't think he's he's going to go anywhere. I don't believe that. I hope not, because I really would just yeah. want, want him to stick around for as long as he, he has like he, he has fun doing it, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, the, the the idea that I had, because I was talking to... Uh, I was talking to Tom about this, producer Tom, um, yes. uh, and I was saying that I feel like if if anything, they could break the the, the sacred timeline, and he could yeah. just go back to just after that, yeah, and then just yeah. kind of reinstate himself and go, yep. hey, so I'm not the same guy that died, but um, I do know what happened, and also I've learned all of this stuff. I've learned the power of family and friendship. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hello, I think brother. He- yeah, yeah. I, I think especially that they are, uh, you know, putting so much effort into into talking about the family, the Thor, uh, the, their mother and everything. I, I think it's, it's, it's not, I, I cannot believe that this would be Tom's last appearance as Loki. Like, it's just, I don't that, think that's yeah. possible, that is to cool. be fair. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean that is my hope. I just think, like I, you know what it was. I followed. I used to. I I had to unfollow them because of this. I was following the Radio Times on Twitter, yeah. and the Radio yeah. Times I think may be the worst um, culprit for clickbaity spoiler titles, like oh, uh, um, yeah. because they tweet about them uh, like like things just after the episodes come out with yeah. like really leading head like qu- tweets. Where I'm like, mm-hmm. that is a spoiler. Like you don't, yeah. you. I know you're acting like it's not. A, that's that's a spoiler. You've spoiled something for me. And they made it out though. Like they had this question like, are, is Loki uh, preparing to to kill off or like end Tom Hiddleston as Loki in in the show and like and move this mantle on? I was like, well, don't put that idea in my head. <laughs> Cause that was all I'm gonna say. And it literally was. It, it you completely affected my entire reading of the last episode. Of um of Loki, like I I couldn't relax during that whole section because I was like, if he literally got to that point where he was like, don't worry, I'm gonna sacrifice myself. I was like, yeah, no, yeah. you are not. Yeah, don't yeah. you dare. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. No, I I I don't. I honestly don't think so. Like I think he just loves this role so much that I don't think he would let it go, or Marvel would let him go because let's be honest, Loki is doing the best out of. Uh, mm. All the three series and stuff like it's, it's the fact that um he 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 thought that he he's been he's he's thought he's been done for like like three times at this point because it was yeah. like they killed him off at the end of Dark World and they were like that's me done and then everybody hated they were like so wait he's like he's coming back right and they went ah, shit so they brought him back in again and obviously they killed him off at the end in the beginning of Infinity War and he was like well that's me done and then like maybe I think it was like not even like a couple of months later they were like do you want to come do a show yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I I just I have, I I have one very big hope for this last episode, and I really hope that they're not gonna force this fucked up relationship into the, it. I'm like the thing. I read an article where Kate Heron said that the idea was that they were meant to be friends. I honestly think that Tom Hiddleston's just like that with people. <laughs> Like he just has that kind of chemistry with like people. Like he like it, it's the I like unintentional just sort of like these two just have that chemistry. <laughs> and I I on I don't think it's meant to be like actively romantic, or in know. a in a way that I think people. I think it's very much just like a, a like an all encompassing kind of like love, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like oh I actively care about this person. It's yeah. it's just a new feeling for me, and it's very intense, and I and I don't know what to do with it because like this is this is the Loki that went straight from feeling like you know being a complete outcast, yeah. thinking that he he that his his family hates him basically, yeah, to yeah. suddenly you know being in a place where he's like oh I can care I, I I'm worthy of love because I see the love that I have for this person who is also me, right. Yeah. 
It's just this yeah. whole thing. I, I, we, I put this in a tweet much more eloquently. Um, I was talking. We were talking to Elliot, mm-hmm. who isn't this huge a fan of the series yes, as, as I, we are. Yeah, I saw. Um, <laughs> but I, I like that they, that he's gone from that he's had to come away from like existing as. I was gonna go into all of this when we actually went through like the last episode, but never mind. <laughs> I like that he that he had to come away from his family to figure out who he was. That yeah. that's the thing that I think is is the most interesting. It's like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm not here as a reflection of like my father or my mm-hmm. brother or mm-hmm. my mother or anything like this. I'm just myself. Yeah, faced with myself <laughs> in many many different iterations. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I don't know. I just I just oof. I I was part of those people who went ew. <laughs> David, <laughs> yeah. I just hated it. I was like, no, 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 no. Let's not push this. I don't, like, I don't think <sighs> it's. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I honestly, it's very difficult because I don't think that they. It's not like they don't have chemistry. No, but, I but like the, so that's the thing that like I'm just sort of like that means that I don't hate it as much as I, I would do if it was like two people who actively had absolutely no chemistry at all in that kind of thing. I'd hate that more, and they try to. And I, this feels like they're going. Why? It, it's very odd. I won't make any judgments until the last episode comes out. You know. Yeah, I I I don't know. I I read a lot about it, like a lot of theories and everything. That maybe it's just you know Loki learning that self love is important, and it's that's it's my kind in, of, in my thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then I heard the friendship one and everything, and I'm like. I I I really hope so, <laughs> because I it's just too weird. Like I I told you already, I hate when it's weird. I I can't handle it. It's just it gives me the creeps. I'm like, no, please don't do this. <laughs> and this one is weird. Like I love both of them. I I you know uh, obviously I care more about Tommy Distance Loki than than uh, Sylvie, but uh, when like don't make it weird because it it it's you know it's like. It's the same like that you don't like the awkward situations. I I just can't handle weird relationships. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no. my skin feels bad. Stop doing this. <laughs> yes, it's just no. Uh, I will have to say two things about episode five because I really loved it. No, three, three, three things. Uh, first, that scene where Alligator Loki <laughs> bites down President Loki's hand and that scream. I almost died. I had to pause the episode because I couldn't I, stop laughing. I honestly, like that scene is obviously hilarious in its own way, it's but hilarious. I also, I also kind of oh. sat there and was like, "Well, this is like, it's kind of sad in its own way as well." Because it's like he's standing there going, "Like, oh god, this was me." Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Oh jeez, oh, yeah, oh god." god. <laughs> and I was like, "I kind of feel for this guy." I was like, "Yeah, of course, you are better than this. Like, you, you were all." They like, have the capacity to be better than this. You just yeah. had to happen to be in the right place with the right people to show you that you were capable of something more. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I it is also hilarious. Point, it, it, was, it was that scream murdered me. Like, <laughs> oh my God, that was so good. Uh, the, other, the other two things, the second one, which was, I think it was, it's just brilliant on Tommy Dustin's part. Uh, when Richard Leon's uh, classic Loki talks about how much he missed his brother. And if you focus on our Tom Hiddleston Loki, that facial expression in there is just that that sold the scene even more. He's, I was like, like, he's killing the entire he's, game. He, he is. He's like, every time he, I'm watching him, like, fuck, he's really good at this. Yeah, yeah. He, he's Loki. He's, he's like, he completely owns this character. It, uh, that was the first instance that broke my heart in that episode. Uh, and then, oh god, I, I, that's where I started to cry. It's when Mobius. Lives. I was going to say, is this the Mobius hug? Yeah. I was like, first of all, I was so happy that he lived. Like, we kind of suspected it. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I knew that four, like, off. come on. Uh, but uh, when he leaves and he holds out his hand and Loki goes for a hug, I was like, I literally was sad. I was like, I was, <laughs> I was in bed because I just finished one of my very long days. It was, it was a shooting, it was one of the shooting day. Yeah. yeah, it was a Wednesday, so I was very tired. Um, I lay down and I was like, "I'm going to watch Loki" because everybody else was watching the football, and I was like, "I don't care about football; it's Loki time." Yep. <laughs> um, and it was literally like he held out his hand and was like, "I'll fucking hug him, you idiot!" And he actually, and then he actually went over and hugged and, him. Yeah, I was like, and hugged him. <laughs> he did the thing. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> the number of times I've yelled out for like certain characters to have any kind of like, like friendly physical affection, and then yeah. they don't. I'm like, this is this means everything that this actually happened. Thank you. I know, I know. I was like, ah. I'm related. I'm like, I wrote it in my review on uh, in my Black Widow review because. That was one thing in Black Widow that I was really waiting for in the end, and it happened. Mm. Uh, um, and uh, I, I literally wrote it in the review at the end that Marvel, I'm going to send, send you the therapy bill because I can't anymore. Like, ever since what the vision kicked in, I am just crying on these things, and you can't do this. Yeah. It's cruel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just excited because, like, like I said, I really, I genuinely have no idea what's going on. Me neither. It's like they opened, so I... they, they, she, and she managed to enchant, encha- they both managed to enchant Elias. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then suddenly that sort of like mist parted, and there's a house, and it's like, yeah, I got nothing. I got no idea. Let's just, let's just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if we can expect any cameos or something like, you know. We've already had one. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm referring more to. I know. Passwords, for example, like, I, I can't, like, I. It's not a must, but I think it would put my small little heart into <laughs> into rest if if I knew that he's gonna see his brother again because I think that's like a very important part of the whole series. Like he misses his brother and they make it clear. So I'm like. <laughs> I I, hate I, I I understand your point. <laughs> yeah. But I also think it's very important that he's that this is all has existed separate from Thor. Like this whole thing, like his this whole arc for him has been his arc. He's yeah. not in the shadow of his brother at all. This yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. has been a mirror to himself. And I I just I love the the everything about like the um what's it called? Uh, the symbolism of the fact that he's yeah. having to like face himself constantly in like so many different forms. I'm like, uh, it's 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 the theme. It's just dripping out of the whole show. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I as I said, it's not necessary, but I I think it would it would give me like little butterflies. Just oh. was that was the Thor and the Jar not good enough? For you? It was funny, <laughs> but it wasn't good. <laughs> But yeah, like you know, it's it's just a small thing. It's probably not gonna happen. Like you know, I don't think so. But uh, it would be nice. It, it would be nice. I I would like that. I, I I know that you know. Obviously, from the interviews and everything, is like Tom and Chris love each other. <laughs> like they really act like brothers of set as well. Uh, so you know, it would be nice to see them together again, uh, acting as Loki and Thor, because I think they work so well together. Like come on. <laughs> Yeah. But oh well, uh, alas, alas, it's alas, it's it's all good. Where are it's we at now? I'm just like I keep looking at the time. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, we're not actually. I thought we'd been going for like nearly two hours. And it's like, <laughs> no, an hour and a half. We're good. I really thought that we'd got like way overboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's what happened with Pagan with our sessions. Yeah. So. I had to watch that in two parts. Uh, and then the second part that I ended up watching, uh, it took, kept me up way too late, and I ended up going to bed at like half eleven. I was like, oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but I hope you at least enjoyed our. I did. Lesson. I loved. It. I, 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 it was very nice to be able to sit down. And actually, I did find it very funny that the two of you were talking about the new Martin Madonna movie, and you were like, "Man, I wonder where they're going to film that. Maybe on this here. I don't know. It's just a random thought." <laughs> You never know. <laughs> I am very excited for that movie, though. I just yeah, so put it I, 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 no, I didn't know know that they were doing uh, another one, but that sounds really great. And I, I did a little, I did a little googling, um, and apparently it's been something that he's been sort of vaguely working on since like ninety four. So that's yep. gonna be very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Really, yeah. I'm ah, oh, I'm supposed to be very happy that it's gonna be like Irish, like super Irish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> good <laughs> yes yes i i have to agree happily uh but yeah that was like uh, you know i obviously miss you because da uh but uh you know i i had a fun time with Tillet and pagan and once again guys thank you for yes thank you for, for, for <laughs> keeping my seat warm 
<laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> you both did a great job. We, we went off topic a lot of times, but uh, oh well. <laughs> Back, you guys barely had a topic. That's, very... that's, that's very true. Okay, we didn't run off topic. We just went crazy, as per usual. It happens. It happens. And it's okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, is there anything else? Oh, oh, one more thing I have to mention. <laughs> it just came to me. Uh, so Netflix is doing a great thing uh, with this three-part uh, series. Oh, the Fair Street thing? Street, mm. yes. And uh, I, I have to say, I obviously watched the first one already. The second one came out today. Uh, the first one was a bit... It wasn't bad, but it wasn't as good as I expected it to be. And uh, I think it went into the gory part and the scary part a bit late in the game. And I... It... Oh, <laughs> God. Did you, did you hear that as well? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, she, this happens to me every time. She freaks me out every time. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not just me. Like for well, folks who don't know, my dog is currently scratching at my door. I'm not going to open it because I can't actually get out of this sort of. I'm in a I'm in a bit of a sort of space at the moment. So, but like that was what that was. Yep, yeah, it was scary. <laughs> anyway, oh god, please continue. Um, <laughs> but uh, I heard that the second one is actually a lot, lot, lot better than the first one was. So I'm very intrigued, and I cannot wait to to watch it today. Uh, and I only just found out when I watched the first one that it's it's based on the uh, Stein books, and I'm like, mm, interesting. I really like the Goosebumps movie uh, with Jack Black, who played right. uh, Stein in there. I see. Uh, so I was like, hmm, interesting. Mm. I really should read his books, but I don't know any. I, think, I know people love Goosebumps, but it's like it was never a thing. So not in here either. Like me. I couldn't find them. I, couldn't I think they think them. people read Goosebumps. I think, I think you know Goosebumps had like a like a presence in the UK, but it was not. It's not nearly as pervasive as it, it clearly is in the US. Yeah. Like I don't think this show was on TV at all for us. At least nope. it wasn't where I, like anything I was able to get to anyway. Yeah, not for us either. So it was like a completely new thing. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I learn everything, something new all the time. Uh, but yeah, it, it's I'm 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 very interested to see where where they're going with this three part movie series because so far it's it's interesting, interesting, mm. very good, very good. So I'm like, <laughs> so today that's that's on the watch list. Huh? <laughs> that's I forgot to mention that. I have a like a small thing, but it's like mm. it's kind of like tangential and and stuff. Um, I've said before, I'm a very big fan of, of a couple of D&D shows. Obviously, Critical yes. Role. Um, please insert the picture of me accidentally wearing all of my Critical Role. Oh, yes, work. I will. I will. <laughs> Literally <laughs> came to walked my mind. out the door and was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, shirt, jacket, trousers. I nearly put my socks on as well. And, I was like, and then I was like, now nah, these are a bit thick. I won't wear these today. And I was like, maybe I should have put them on. It doesn't matter. You just cr cracked me up. Um, the other one that I watched, which I'm very big fan of, is Dimension 20, which is on Dropout, which is a uh, thing by College Humor. They're doing a series at the moment, four parts, um, uh, called Misfits and Magic, which is kind of like a parody sort of satire thing of Harry Potter. And it Ooh. is fucking brilliant. <laughs> it's been two episodes out so far, and it is my favourite one that they've done, I think, since the last season of Fantasy High, which was the ended beginning of last year like in March last year mm -hmm. um and I've loved everything that they've done but like this is genuinely hilarious Brennan gets a chance to play as opposed to DM Abria Iyengar is incredible and I love her Tess will you please stop knocking on the door <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming to get you <laughs> she's not gonna stop um but it is it is genuinely so funny um yeah. I will send you a little clip um because yes, they do little, these little you know you know YouTube's been really pushing those like shorts recently. Yep. There's yep. there's one that I there's a couple and I'll, I'll send them to you because they're, they're, they're... Yes. like heck I will give you my dropout password just so you can watch these because they are genuinely so fun. I'm um, game. <laughs> uh, the creative team, uh, Bria Iyengar, who is the uh, she's the DM, but the, there is also oh I'm his name is Orion. I think his name is Orion D Black. Um, the, basically the creative team behind it are all full of um, 
people of color and queer people. So they've really like nice. gone in to like nice. the the sort of terribleness of, of <laughs> like the the worst parts, and then just sort of gone. We're gonna make fun of all of these little bits, <laughs> and we're gonna make this a super like diverse. Um, nice. Like two out of the the um, you've got you've got two black folks and and uh, an Asian woman. And then a white guy as the yeah. the other guy in in the cast. It's like this is perfectly like super diverse, and the, it's uh, Bria is just incredible. Like I've said so many times, but I absolutely nice. am loving what she's doing at the moment. Nice, it's nice, just nice. really funny. I've seen like they finished episode two, and I, watched, I was watching yesterday, and they were like building up to like this like going to like the, basically the dueling class, and then mm. she was like, "We're gonna do this next time," and I went, "No, no, I want more now." <laughs> Anyway, it's just great, and I recommend people go and get Dropout if they actually feel like... Again, it is like another subscription service, but it's like a fiver, and you get so much great content. Dropout is so good. <laughs> anyway, well, I, that's, I, all. I, that's all I got. Okay, okay. I believe you. I, I, I might check it out, not gonna lie. I need fun content. Okay. It, it, it's a great thing for you to stick on whilst you're drawing, I would say that. Because um, you can just put it on the background, and... Um, they have people chattering at you, and the, the episodes are like two hours long. Oh, okay. So it's like. Then it's definitely something to consider. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. I like that. I like that. Um, all right. Let's say goodbye. Mm -hmm. uh, and... <laughs> Sorry. Spin us Aaron's face, like high fiving my microphone. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And that's just Dylan behind me. <laughs> just mine on. <laughs> I keep trying to make his face. Sometimes I can do it, sometimes I can. No, not today. <laughs> not today. It's not Just Muppet today. face. Mm. <laughs> um, it, it, it has to come naturally, otherwise I can't do it. I can. No, I can't. Not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 it's it's the Muppet face. Why have we done this? Then it's going to be taking so many screenshots. I, I swear to God, if these end up on Twitter, I'm coming to find you. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Uh, I can't. I can't. It's the Muppet face. I'm. I'm done. <laughs> the, uh, there, there's a, there's an ongoing joke in um, New Girl actually, where um, uh, uh, Jake Johnson, who plays Nick Miller, he does this sort of like upside down smile thing, thing where he goes that, like, but it's like way more. And he, they call it his turtle face, and like he can't be like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not like a turtle, but it's like probably like like a proper like frown. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Yeah, oh, God. Um, all right. <clears throat> knock, knock. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the Tess is apparently saying, who's that? Because she just knocked on my door again. Go on. Who? I know this one. It's not even that good. <laughs> Boo-hoo. <laughs> Don't cry. It's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> you got to step up your game, man. I Half of these jokes that you keep telling me, I already know, which is part of the disappointment that I feel when you start telling them. It was still good. I don't care. I left. It's like, I need, I need, I need new jokes. I need you to, I, I need surprises, man. You gotta, you gotta come out. Give me some heavy hitters, baby. Fine. That's my challenge. I'm here to find new ones. I need new jokes and you have to make me laugh. Genuinely. <laughs> You're laughing now as well, so... Yeah, but that wasn't a joke. It's at the situation that does not count. Anyway, Katie is back, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. This was fun. I missed his, his face. I, ma I made you a boy. I'm sorry. I can't. <laughs> it's alright with me. I got... That's good. Uh, so, I missed her face. You've done uh, this a couple of times. I mean, you 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 have it. You do this every once in a while. You you mix pronouns up, and I'm like, interesting. Yeah, yeah that's me. Don't I don't know why. Does some um, Hungarian have like separate pronouns for for, for no? Yeah, there you go. No, we That'll don't. Probably be why. Yeah, so I I always have to think a little bit. Like it's not like oh my god. Mm, no, no, no. I it's I absolutely like... understand because there are there are the there are a few languages. I know Spanish being one of them because I'm learning Spanish. Spanish yeah. when you're referring to like. Um, well, no, that's not true. Uh, I was gonna say if you're learning, referring to like his or her in like a it, it's his, it, it's kind of it's just one word, but like him yeah. or her is like it, it, they're separate words. It's a whole thing. 
So I understand the idea. Yeah, we, we, we don't use separate ones. So it's just like, you know, it's just one thing. It's mm. literally one uh, letter. It's U. Hmm. That's it. Mm. So like, <laughs> it's something like that. Uh, so that's why sometimes I confuse them. It's it's not in. I promise it's not in offensive on my part or anything. It's just I, have to I was just curious. That's why I was <laughs> I'm making. I'm pointing. Fair, fair, fair. Um, so yeah, see, uh, we will probably have an interview coming up. Oh yes, it's still, true. Yeah. Yes, it's it's still We're working on uh, it. Uh, under construction. <laughs> I don't know why. It's under construction, but this time we're both prepared for it. Yes. That's all I'll we, say. We, we did our homework. We did. Um, it's really yeah. good homework. <laughs> but first, I think we're going to uh, drop another, lo uh, well, a Marvel. We'll do like basically. a proper low key sort of yeah. breakdown. Once. Think, yeah. Because next week it's, it's over. It's over. Yeah. So I will ask Ryan if he wants to join in. Or do I don't you. know if he watched it? Mm. I'm not sure. We'll see. We can just talk about it ourselves. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but anyway, this was fun. Uh, still be careful, please. Yes. Uh, Despite yeah. what the Tory government will have you believe, the pandemic is still going on. Yeah, yeah. It's still happening, guys, unfortunately. Uh, get vaccinated if you can. Yes. And despite the fact that apparently it won't be a legal requirement in about 10 days' time, keep wearing your masks. Keep wearing your masks. Please. Yeah. yeah. It's like, just don't be an ass. Mm. Unless you want another lockdown, then, you know, be an ass. I Honestly, the, you know, it doesn't matter. Just, does, just don't yeah. be an asshole. Yeah, just don't be an asshole. Uh, find us on the socials. Uh, subscribe to us and, uh, you know, like and share and comment. We read the we, comments. Yeah, I, we do. I, I like reading them. Even so, though when we started this, I said I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I do. Every time. <laughs> because it's nice. Come on. Uh, and yeah, and we love you all. Bye. Fare thee well, friend. Yeah.